Good afternoon, everyone. I'm sort of reminded of Monty Python when you bring the business pool person into a bunch of computer scientists and physicists. It's like, and now for something completely different. So let me show you the agenda that we'll be following very quickly. We live in really interesting times from a business perspective, and I like the acronym VUCA. So a time of volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. One of the ways that people show this very easily is if you look at the chart on the right, and you go back to about 1958 or so, the average length of time that a company was on the S&P 500 list, that's the list of stock exchange, the fastest or the largest companies in the U.S. stock exchanges, was 60 years. And the chart ends at about 15 years is what's being predicted. So huge turnover that's been happening. But we also live in, I think, very exciting times. And I want to do, as some of the speakers did this morning as well, go back just slightly in history. So when I was growing up, you had analog television run by networks. So CBS in the United States, CBC in Canada. That quickly changed to cable. So digital is on its way. Forget about networks. We moved to YouTube. Now you too can be a producer, create your own films, your own movies, and do whatever you like with them. Oh, and Netflix came along. I want to pause a bit on Netflix because of their story I find is quite fascinating. I actually forgot until I was preparing for today that they were founded in 1997, and they actually started out by mailing CD-ROMs. Remember? This is this new technology, CD-ROMs, which were actually DVDs at that point, and mailing these instead of having to drive to pick out a DVD to watch at what was their main competitor was Blockbuster. So in, back in the day, you would go to a Blockbuster store, which would be larger than this room. There would be tons and tons of these things. You'd try to figure out what it is you wanted to watch. You might ask the clerk, oh, what's the hot thing? I can't remember where they are. The hottest ones were at the front of the store, et cetera, et cetera. So for those of you of my age, you'll remember exactly doing that. For younger people, it's like, what is he talking about? This is crazy. They looked at doing VHS and found that they didn't mail very well. So they went with DVDs. They worked very well in the mail. And in 2001, not on the chart, they actually went to Blockbuster and said, you know, we're thinking maybe you'd like to buy us because Blockbuster was a major competitor, and they offered themselves for sale for $50 million, 5-0. Blockbuster actually laughed. The CEO of Blockbuster couldn't keep a straight face. He thought this was the funniest thing he'd ever heard. Forget it, we're not doing it. I just scroll forward, what happened? Well, they mailed their one billionth DVD in 2007. Even more important, as time went on, they started to stream. And then even more importantly, as they were streaming, they started a subscription model. This was crazy. A subscription model, you paid whatever, $8 a month, $10 a month, and get as much as you want to watch, and you don't have to go to a store. And then from there, AI starts to come in, and they make recommendations. And then they also will tell you, remember on the, the forum, in terms of are you still watching, because you haven't done anything for a while, maybe we better um, let you uh, sort of give you an alert there, you're still out there, and you have to push some button. They got a little better with that. Now you can buy Netflix socks. So this is the ultimate in customer centricity. Netflix socks, actually, uh, if you stop moving, they will alert you, or they'll alert Netflix, that basically you've fallen asleep, and they'll stop the program. So the program you can then, when you wake up, you can pick up and watch the program where you've fallen asleep according to your socks. Right there, actually available, pick them up online. Music, equally exciting. So when I grew up, uh, Pink Floyd, that was uh, the cl classic album of the day. I mean, in Switzerland, I have to put on Sound of Music. That quickly became replaced by CD-ROMs. iTunes, huge innovation. What's this idea of having to go and buy a CD-ROM? And of course, the latest one now is Spotify. Did you get your yearly review in terms of the things that you listen to on Spotify? I got mine. It was pretty good for me, I don't know about you, but pretty good for me. It actually hit pretty nice in terms of what I listened to. Again, AI and digitalization making that possible. 
Communication, equally different. Some people still get mail. Some people still use the old black telephone, although I don't see that around very much anymore, I gotta say. Those things, I mean, I love Nokia as a company. They were absolutely in front of everyone, as was BlackBerry for pure Canadian tragedy. Um, on to smartphones. Forget about snail mail, Gmail, right? Just electronic mail. Facebook completely changed the way we communicate. And then, of course, there's also Instagram and Snapchat. If you look at information, I'll brief, pause briefly on one of these. Encyclopedia Britannica, when I was growing up, that was the key authority. That's where you started everything. Sometimes you get information from newspapers. So some of my favorites there. This was crazy. Having a crowd-based encyclopedia, not experts, like people, anybody can go on and actually write things in an encyclopedia that we're gonna use, are you kidding? It's, it's Encyclopedia Britannica, just put it online. You know, guess what, took over. It is like an authoritative source and a completely different way of looking at the world in terms of information. And of course, these guys are the superpowers uh, and continue to be. I don't even have to name who these are. You all recognize them. So digital transformation, I've chosen from the business to consumer for this portion of the, the talk, really touches every area of our lives completely. I can't think of an area that it doesn't, but being in a room of physicists, I couldn't resist having this chart. In terms of if you look at the number of stars in the universe, and on the other side, it's the number of bytes or bits and bytes of data, and we're somewhere in here. This is according to IBM in 2015. My guess is that IBM has updated that and it's gone off the charts now, just to give an idea of the size. This isn't big data, this is huge data. None of the business innovations that I've mentioned could have occurred without the basic science, without the applied science, especially physics, computer engineering, and computer science. What the business people do, and, and one of the reasons for my missions with digital transformation, is to help companies do it better. The stakes are incredibly high if you look at this in terms of what they're estimating these things to be worth. This is from the, the New York Times. So connected cars, a $600 billion industry, assisted living, $270 billion industry. You can see down the chart. This is huge from a financial perspective. And just about every industry is being transformed. Who would have thought that digitalization through Airbnb would be hurting hotels? And hotels have gone through a successive set of <clears throat> mergers and acquisitions. I don't know about you, but I can hardly tell which hotel I'm in anymore because I don't know who owns who now. And that's a direct response to the disruption. Speaking of disruption, how about Uber and the taxi businesses? Now there's been pushback in different jurisdictions, most recently being in, the, in London and the UK, but they've done incredibly well in others. I love this one. I follow the newspaper industry. I find it a fascinating industry. And the key line here, the New York Times now has 2.9 million digital-only subscribers out of 3.8 million subscribers. They managed to digitalize. They're one of very few that have done it in that traditional industry. Hats off to them, they did a tremendous job doing that. So while there's been spectacular successes, I've shown you a few, there's also been many that fail. Um, this is part of a research project that Elspeth Murray and I have been working on for the last three or four years, and we're trying to figure out what causes businesses to succeed in this digitalization space. There's six main things that we find. Um, you can see them for yourself in terms of strategy, decision-making culture, analytic skills, leadership, tools, and data integrity, and access. And the latter being really critical to get started with. As I say, my comments have been on B2B, or sorry, B2C. I want to leave you with one example of B2B. And Germany is doing tremendous work on business to business, industry 4.0, if you will. And it's changing the way business can work with other businesses. And I want to leave you with, there's a few of the building blocks of, this, of Industry 4.0. I want to leave you with this. 
potentially the factory of the Before future. all that, some of Yorkshire's dairy farmers are turning to state-of-the-art robotic milking systems to help improve the production of their herds and their quality of life. Traditionally, dairy farmers had to work very long hours with very little downtime. With more details, here is Harry. Robots say, let me explain. Low milk prices, a rise in production costs and long winters have taken their toll. In 2002, there were 1,318 dairy fa farmers in our region, but now it's a very different picture. The number of producers has almost halved and now stands at 728. About 200 of Britain's dairy farmers are currently using robots to milk their herds. That's 2%. A further 2% are said to be seriously considering the investment. So can robotics help the industry recover from its troubles? Cathy Killick has been to see them in action at a farm in the Dales. On the edge of the Dales outside Skipton, Chelka House Farm perches on its hillside looking the picture of tradition. But in this picturesque setting, a technological revolution is taking place. Max and Ruth Holmes and their son Graham may not look like IT geeks, but they preside over some of the most sophisticated gadgetry, all housed in their brand new cowshed, part funded by the EU. Inside, their dairy herd is in the lap of luxury. The cubicles are the biggest cubicles you can get, so that they've got plenty of room. It's like us having a king-size bed. They're not just a mat, they're a mattress. They're a mat with a mattress inside of two inch thick. So when they sit on them, they're comfy and insulated. There's even an automatic squeegee that cleans up the cow pats straight into an underfloor tank. But it's in the milking area that technology has really taken over. Whenever a cow feels like it, it can wander into the milking bay where robots get to work. First with a wash and brush up, then lasers read the udder to guide a milking cluster into place. When it's finished, the cow leaves, having effectively milked itself. They have adapted absolutely fantastic, particularly the younger animals, of which, but there again, they've seen nothing else but the new robots. Uh, yep, they've absolutely taken to it like uh, ducks to water would be the phrase. Upstairs, this computer can tell the farmer not only how much milk each cow is producing, but also how much milk each teat is producing, which means that any health problems could be flagged up very, very early. And it can also adjust the feed that the cows get. So a cow that gives a lot of milk gets a lot of feed back in compensation. It's very, very clever. The cows can do their own thing, giving the farmer more time to cope with calving or welfare. The signs are they like this new life. The cows are interacting with each other, which is great. They're very, very quiet. I mean, you can hear now, uh, it's a really quiet shed, which shows the cows are very content. You're not having much belving or much cows making racket or running around or slipping. They're all very much quiet, sedate, steady, very, very well looked after, so very content. The technology has given this farm new life. Graham was on the verge of giving up dairy farming, but has embraced a high-tech future that should help safeguard UK milk production. Cathy Killick, BBC Look North, Addingham. Fantastic idea. Yeah, eh? Great yeah. stuff. Yeah. Wondering when the robotic newsreaders are coming in, Harry. They're here already. <laughs> I love that clip because it gives you a really clear picture that everything is under digital transformation, virtually every aspect of life. Thank you very much.